Welcome to Cooking with Mrs. Salisbury. Today we'll be making Miner's Meatloaf. Grandma and I would make this meatloaf up Big Creek, nestled in the mountains at their Sunshine Mine house where they lived in a beautiful neighborhood. Grandpa was a silver miner at Sunshine Mine. So here is our Miner's Meatloaf for a hearty dinner tonight. So in a large bowl, I put on some vinyl gloves uh, yes, I know I used to love to mix and mess with my hands, but the vinyl gloves are nice too. So in a large bowl, I'd like you to have two pounds of extra lean hamburger. That'll cut down the fat a lot. Two pounds extra lean hamburger. We're going to have one egg. With the egg, I always um, crack it in a bowl so we don't get shell. Then I have a garbage bowl so we can put it right in there. So one egg, then, then we'll have a fourth a cup of milk, fourth a cup of milk, not too much, just a little for moisture. We'll have a teaspoon of Worcestershire, and then we'll have um, two tablespoons of mustard, two tablespoons of mustard. Then we'll be having a teaspoon of salt, so we can put this all in this liquid ingredient right here. Teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper. I have a coarse black pepper here. Then we will have a fourth a teaspoon of whole leaf basil. And half a teaspoon of parsley. I use the whole leaf. I like to see the leaves in it a little bit. And we'll just have a pinch here of oregano just a pinch of oregano, not too much. Then we'll also have a cup of quick uh, cooking oats, like one minute oats. So one cup of oats. Now I'm gonna set this aside a second. This is so fast to make. And then we're going to be cutting up a yellow onion. We'll need about a half cup of chopped onion. Let's get a measuring cup out here for a half cup. Looking at the measuring cup, hang on, half cup, there we go. So with the onion, the root in, leave that in, leave that intact. We'll cut the other stem in off, remember with the knife, grab it here on the metal so you have a firm hold, your hand won't rock. I rinsed the onion off and dried it. Then I cut right down here so I could peel the onion. We can put that right here in this bowl. Peel the onion and take that outer edge off. You can always save the um, onion skin and put that in when you're roasting a chicken or turkey. You can save it in a Ziploc bag in the refrigerator because it will so-called dye the uh, the sauce or the gravy yellow, just like if we were dyeing wool, that we would uh, use onion skin. The same thing is with the uh, uh, with the sauce or gravy we'd be making. Next, this onion is rocking a lot, so I'm going to cut off this in. Now it is flat. I can still use this. That's pretty tough, so I can cut this up right here. So we just kind of want to course uh, about a fourth of an inch chop. So what I'm doing is I'm like a claw, I have my hand up on top, I'm rocking that knife in a little bit, not all the way, only about to here. And I'm coming across, my hand is up above, my hand is up above, then I'm going to stop, then I'm going to go this way, so it's like we're making our own Vegematic. We're, uh, having our own little chopper, so I'm doing about a fourth of an inch going across, fourth of an inch going across, claw, hang on, and then look at that, you have a perfectly chopped onion. Now there's nothing wrong with chopping some extra onion, putting it in a Ziploc bag, then put it in another little bag in the refrigerator, then your onion is ready to go whenever you need it. So I'm going to stop there because we only need a half cup of onion. So I'm going to have our onion right here and I'm going to put it in. 
Here's our onion, and I'm gonna put it in our meatloaf. Just one second, we'll move this over. Moving our cutting board of onion over, and I'll put that in a Ziploc bag for later. So, this is the part I used to love when I was a kid, squishing the meat and these ingredients together in that white sink of, in a bowl, in that white sink of grandma's. I thought it was quite fun, although I remember my hands getting really cold. Uh, I did enjoy it, so we can just mix all that together. This is so fast to make. Um, I'm going to have baked potatoes with it tonight, but it's very fast to make, and it also stretches the meat a bit, and uh, makes a nice sandwich too the next day if you'd like. So here we go on this. I'm just seeing that everything is evenly mixed up. The Oatmeal will help it keep its shape. Look at that. That's done. So now I'm going to kind of make it into a loaf ahead of time. I have a glass pan only because I think for meatloaf, glass pans are faster to clean. And then I'm going to go around and see how I'm kind of tucking this down a little bit. I'm tucking it down a little bit, then I'll push down. Tucking it down a little bit, then I'll push down. That's it. 350 degrees for 50, 50 minutes, 350, 50, 50 minutes, and we'll be back, and we will be putting our ketchup on top and baking it for another five minutes. See you when it comes out of the oven. Welcome back to Cooking with Mrs. Salisbury with our Miner's Meatloaf. It was baking in the oven at 350 degrees for 50 minutes. I put one third cup of ketchup on top, baked it an additional five minutes. So here is our beautiful miner's meatloaf in memory of my grandfather, the silver miner from beautiful North Idaho. I hope you enjoyed my miner's meatloaf. Thank you again for cooking with Mrs. Salisbury. See you next time.